Learn from the Master. Sitting in the dark in a practically immobile car, surrounded by other immobile cars, in a gridlocked street, with floodwaters rising up the height of one's tyres, and the rain playing an infernal drumbeat on your car roof is not what one might call a pleasurable experience. The air inside the car was close, but I could hardly crack the windows an inch because of the crazy rain. Not a policeman in the whole city to direct the traffic, and the street lights and the traffic lights all switched off because the unexpected fury of the rain had triggered electrocution fears. And at the helm of every vehicle in the street sat every man for himself. So, chaos. Cars jammed together and unable to move. I'd left work early, they'd sent us off at 3.30, when the street outside our office that normally never floods started to fill up with water. It was 7.30 and I wasn't even halfway home. I had some fruit and water in the car and I'd phoned home to say expect me when you see me so I was okay on all those fronts. I was worrying about what I'd do if the water rose high enough to enter the car. There was too much water outside already and lots more descending every minute. But it wasn't a concern I could do anything to LA. If it came to that, I and hundreds of others would just have to deal with it. My real problem was another case of too much water. This time inside me. I needed the loo and for the last hour I'd thought of almost nothing else. The incessant liquid sounds around me weren't helping. At this rate of progress I was at least 5-6 hours away from home and there was no way I could last that long. I was quietly reaching a stage of panic. In an instant... I lost the mental battle with myself. However mortifying, I'd have to take a chance. I'd maneuvered into the outermost lane of traffic some time ago, and now I determined to drive into the next open gate. Half an hour later, and hugging my legs tightly closed, I scanned the flat owner's list for a female name. There was one on the first floor and I charged up the stairs reminding myself not to hammer on the doorbell. Even before she opened the door, I burst out. It's so embarrassing but I've been stuck in traffic since 3.30 and I'm just desperate to go to the loo. Give her credit, she didn't waste a second. She ushered me in, shut the door, flew through the house saying, follow me, switched on the light and directed me in. We will draw a discreet veil over the rest. Suffice it to say that I blessed her alacrity. When I came out, she invited me to sit down for a bit. And suddenly, we were both laughing. I thanked her and she said, don't be silly. We introduced ourselves. Then out of the blue, she said, stay and have dinner with me. The traffic's not going any place. Maybe it will be better in an hour or so. Phone home, tell them you're safe and dry and not to worry. I know it sounds improbable, but that's what I wound up doing. She was an online editor and spent most of her time at home, so she was delighted to have the unexpected company. And I'd been cooped in my car for too long with the waters creeping up around me and was grateful for the reprieve. We talked a while Then she reminded me she had some dinner ready, but would need to add to it. Which of these three vegetables she had in the fridge would I like? And I chose one. Warning her that I wasn't very handy in the kitchen department, I rose to help, but was waved away. She preferred to work alone in her open plan kitchen. I could lay the table if I wanted something to do. So I laid the table, finding things as per directions, and marvelling at her culinary skills. Her knife flew over those vegetables, her eyes hardly even looking down. She was super efficient. She felt every bottle as she reached for it and sprinkled the spices with her fingers. 
She ran her hand over the gas flame as if checking for heat, and oddly, I even caught her listening to the food as it cooked. Her hands mixed and chopped and tossed with the ease of long practice. As the vegetables came close to being done, she heated up the rest of the meal and rolled and roasted perfectly round chapatis. I was so grateful to have been told just to lay the table. She brought everything together and dished up like a master chef. We sat down to eat and she jumped up again to bring water. She returned with a jug and reached for the glass on the right side of the place setting and I realized I'd thoughtlessly placed it on the left side since I'm a lefty myself. There was a moment of awkwardness as I wondered how she couldn't see it sitting there on the left. Was she blind? And then the hot and cold fingers of absolute stupefaction ran up and down my body as I faced the ridiculous possibility. Was she actually blind? She put the jug down and smiled broadly. You've just figured it out, haven't you? That I can't see? Drat! It was the glass! So overwhelmed, I couldn't speak. So I just reached out and put the glass near her hand. I just couldn't believe it. She admitted it was unfair, but it gave her a kick to see how long she could pull it off. She taught herself to look in the direction of people's speech. It was easy. And in her home, with everything placed exactly as she wanted it, it was only if something was moved that she could be tripped up. Otherwise, she could navigate with confidence. Letting me lay the table had been a silly mistake. But, but, but the cooking? How on earth do you manage? <laughs> I was guided to this level of proficiency by many cuts and burns and some truly awful food, undercooked, overcooked and with all the wrong spices. But I'm stubborn and independent, and I figured things out in the end. It's not rocket science, you know. There are plenty of non-visual cues. You just have to know what to listen for. I felt so humbled and so ashamed of my own inadequacies. So I asked her, Will you teach me? And she went terribly still. Surely you're not blind too? No, no, you aren't, silly me. You don't know how to cook. That's what you're saying, aren't you? And so, mad as it sounds, that's how I learned how to cook. From a sightless stranger, now a dear friend, whose house I barged into one impossibly rainy night because I was frantic for a loo.